So last week, Robert Hur's report came out. He's the special counsel that was looking into President Biden's um, classified material that was found in his home and investigating whether or not there was any basis for charges against the president for holding that material. And I don't want to get into that story as much because that's a whole other thing. But the the bombshell that came out of his report was not about the classified material, but part of Robert Hur's reason for not bringing charges against the president had to do with his age and mental acuity. Right. Uh, one point, the report says he characterized Biden as well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory who had diminished faculties in advancing age. And therefore, to prosecute him didn't make sense because a jury probably wouldn't convict him given his feeble-mindedness, I guess. This got quite a reaction from the White House and from President Biden <laughs> himself, but it did yeah. bring back into the spotlight the fact that he is 81 years old. Yeah. And between him and Trump, they will be the oldest people ever to run for the presidency, surpassing four years ago the same two candidates as, as uh, uh, John Stewart pointed out in The Daily Show. So I want to talk to you about this issue of his age and what to do about it. First off, do you think it's unfair or wrong for the press to be making a big deal out of his age? Or is there something really there? It's not remotely unfair or wrong to make a big deal about his age if when there are signs that age is impacting him. So if he was 81, and I think, you know, we've probably met people who are 81. I've met people who are 81 who, I mean, they're absolutely on top of it and they are extremely vigorous and, you know, you can't believe they're 81. Yeah. Um, when I see Joe Biden, I absolutely can believe he's 81. Right. And all Americans can. 86% of Americans believe he's too old to be president. Why? Because, Sky, he's too old to be president. And <laughs> the problem that we have, though, is when you say that, then people say, well, what about Trump? I'm with you. <laughs> I think Donald Trump is A, too old to be president, B, too corrupt to be president, C, and too incompetent to be president. I mean, you go down the list. Mm -hmm. So when I say Joe Biden is too old to be president, I'm not saying, and therefore vote for Donald Trump. That's what how people sort of fill in the blanks there. No, 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 not at all. As I wrote, better than Trump is a really low bar here. Um, <laughs> sure. I, I think he's better than Trump. I think that's a really low bar. But guess what? When 86% of America thinks that he is too old to be president, you have an electoral vulnerability there. And, and the bottom line is you don't eliminate that electoral vulnerability by screaming at people on social media to shut up about his age. And because you're dealing with a universal human experience at this point. We have 81-year-old relatives uh, we have some of our parents might be in that age range. And when you look at that and you experience that, you know that when you're 81, each day you have might be your best day. And every other day gets harder. And you cannot just cause people to drop that concern by yelling at them about Donald Trump. As much as I agree that I think Joe Biden is a better will be a better president than Donald Trump, you can still say, but I'm really nervous about his age. And there's nothing wrong with that, Sky, because it's sensible, normal, common sense concern to raise. I think one of the things that's interesting about this, this criticism of Biden is it has nothing to do with policy. It has nothing to do with ideology. It has yeah. nothing to do with partisanship. And as you put it, it is a universally experienced human reality. We all have people in our lives who age and we recognize this. So it's it's an interesting challenge for the Democrats and for Biden because you can't just chalk it up to partisanship right? Uh, or, or biased media or something like that. Uh, the other thing that was striking is when you go back and watch footage of him from the 2020 election, granted it was yeah. a weird election because of the pandemic and he wasn't out on the road as much, so that may have preserved some of his energy. Just his speaking voice and presence had more vigor than it does now. He has clear, and this has been true of everybody who's occupied that office. There's always those comedians who will take photos of a president on their inauguration day and then four or eight years later and show how much they've aged because everyone agrees it's an incredibly challenging and taxing job. But when you're 
81 years old, it's that much more taxing. So it's it, it's clear the effect on him has been negative and his stamina is not what it was. Um, you speak publicly a lot. I have too throughout my adult life. And one of the things I learned early on as a public speaker is that if I am visibly nervous, it makes the audience nervous. They, yeah. they empathize with you and they and it, it's distracting. So the sooner I could learn how to hide my nervousness and put the audience at ease, it worked better. And I've noticed myself when I watch President Biden on television, I get nervous watching him because he seems so frail or what's he going to say or is he... Yeah. It, it, and it, it's very off-putting when that's the commander in chief and that's the guy in charge yeah. of the federal government. Whereas with President Trump, I also got very nervous when he would speak or do anything publicly, but I wasn't nervous for him. I was nervous for me. What is he going to say? What is he going to do? Um, so both these guys are really unsavory candidates for different reasons, but it feels like we're stuck with them. Um, yeah. So well, and one reason why ahead. we're stuck with them is because we have their fate that everyone says, I can't believe they are giving us these two candidates again. Well, who's they? It should be right. we. Like the statement, I can't believe we are doing this again because there is, Trump is winning overwhelmingly in a contested primary. Um, there is a tiny bit of a primary on the Democratic side. I mean, there is a little bit more sense that there is a they on the Democratic side who are giving us Biden, but it really is a he. It's Biden who's giving us Biden because- yeah. You know, it's really up to him. Uh, the Democrats are kind of in a bind because everyone knows recent political history. If you mount a serious primary challenge to a sitting president, your party tends to lose. That happened in 76. There was a Reagan primary challenge to Gerald Ford, and then Gerald Ford loses. That happened in 1980. There was a Ted Kennedy primary challenge to Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter lost. That happened in 92. There was a Pat Buchanan primary challenge to uh, to George H.W. Bush. H.W. Bush. Bush loses. So the lesson all these parties have taken is if there's a serious primary challenge to our incumbent president, we're probably losing this. It splits the party. It fractures it. So it's up to Joe Biden to say, no, I'm not going to pursue this. And as we've when we've had conversations, Sky, with our own relatives and loved ones, Often the last person to recognize that they need to step away is the loved one you're talking to. They're the last one to reach that conclusion because think about how hard that of a conclusion that is to reach, to say, I am now in such a twilight phase of my life that I can't do my job and I need to retire is a hard thing for a human being to confront. And then when you layer it, the pride of the presidency, the power of the presidency, the perks of the presidency, and then one of the things you're saying to Joe Biden is you might lose to the guy that you already beat and who is also quite old and who also completely garbles his syntax and his words and everything. Why should he be the one to step aside? And so you really get into this dynamic that is Joe Biden has to decide on his own that it is not time for him to run again. And that's a really, really, really hard thing to do. So I I concur with you on the on the political realities of this, the history of parties that mm -hmm. run opposition candidates in the primaries against their incumbent presidents don't fare well. But it raises the question, and maybe this has happened, I've obviously got no insider knowledge, but why aren't more stakeholder Democrats trying to convince Biden behind the scenes, forget a public primary challenge. Why right. aren't they trying to convince him behind the scenes that this is not a good move? And beyond that, I don't know Biden at all, but I tend to, no doubt he's got an ego. Anybody who runs for the presidency has to. But when he decided not to run in 2016, because he was in that grief over the loss of his son, and he did decide to run in 2020, I think there had to be some reality to the narrative that he chose to run in 2020 because he, he knew the country was in peril with Trump right? and that he was one of the few Democrats that had the potential to unify the party and put up you know, right. a really good chance. So I'm not saying it was without ego, or, but anyway, bringing that motivation forward to 2024, 
I could see Biden ending his career as a genuine hero. Yeah. If he were to go out saying, hey, I defeated Donald Trump. I, I turned the economy around after the pandemic. Uh, we passed the infrastructure bill. We've kept things back on track. And I am going to magnanimously, magnanimously, like George Washington, step aside from the presidency at the height of, it, of my power because I care about the country and the future. And I mean, he could go down in history as a truly saintly figure as a president if he were to bow out now. But all that's at risk because he won't. Where are the Democrats behind the scenes trying to convince him that that's the right play? Yeah, that's interesting. I think there are Democrats in front of the scenes trying to convince him. So <laughs> yeah, we'll my colleague Ezra Klein, you know, uh -huh. he, he did a much talked about sort of audio essay where he walked through that 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 Biden should step aside and let a convention decide his replacement. Um, so there there is actually in front of the scenes, behind the scenes, a lot of people are talking about this. But at the very at the very end of the day, it has to be Joe Biden's call. And then, and then, you know, if you're a Democrat or if you're not a Democrat and you're somebody like me who sees Trump as a ex uniquely dangerous figure, then you kind of, you're in this position where you have a really tough sell that you're trying to make because you cannot say that his age doesn't matter. That's gaslighting people. That's mm -hmm. people get literally angry at that. Um, if you try to tell them age, age doesn't matter because everybody knows age matters. Everybody knows. Mm -hmm. So you can't do that with a straight face, although people are trying it on Twitter, uh, you know, bless their hearts. But there is a way you can say, no, wait a minute, as difficult as and as suboptimal as it might be to vote for an 81 year old president who's obviously in a difficult, you know, on the downslope of his mental acuity and his physical vigor and all of that. You got, he's better than the other guy. And a lot of Democrats are really sleeping on how hard that's it's gonna be to make that case because the Democrats all know chapter and verse the case against Trump. They know all of the things that Trump has done. I 100% guarantee you, Holy Post listeners, that Republicans and independents do not know all the details of the case against Trump. They right. don't. And that might be gobsmacking to you. That might be shocking to you. You might not believe it, but believe it. And so what you're having to do then is make a case to somebody who doesn't know much at all about Trump's scandals that they should vote for the guy who's in obvious decline because the competitor who, while he's in decline, he presents himself differently, right? That the competitor is more dangerous, but for reasons that you don't yet know. Mm -hmm. And that's a really hard sell. And I know there are people screaming at their phones while they're listening, saying, everybody knows all the bad stuff. No. Yeah. Live, live in Tennessee, guys. Live in Tennessee and ask a Trump voter here a very basic question about a very basic Trump scandal. And you will be surprised at the lack of response. Whoa!